Hello everyone, it's Brad back again from Watonga, Oklahoma. So I'd actually stopped by a couple of banks and they had some change for me to get. This is actually all pennies in here, I'll tell you a story. Um, I stopped by Jetmore at a farmer state bank to get 20 bucks. She took $5 out of the, the original coin box, the cent box I had. And then with Kenny, Kansas, I stopped by a bank and they gave me $10 which they had like this little carton. It wasn't a box, but it was a carton and it had 10 rolls in there, or uh, $10 and pennies in there. So anyhow, so I've got $30 in coins. Well, I was getting the penny box out of the truck last night and I wound up dropping it. It crushed the box and it also like split two of the rolls. So I've got a half, two half, you know, halves there and then some more separated in here. But anyhow, um, it's 30 bucks in pennies. I like seeing these in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and search the loose rolls first, and then I'm gonna work on the ones that look like they're in the Loomis uh, wrap. And then I'll do the hand rolls last. All right, probably about five or six rolls down. Just wanna kinda do an update. Um, I did find a few wheat cents, 1947 nests there, and then 1941 Philadelphia. Then on this roll here I'm working on right now, just pulled out this one. Let me turn it. 1917. A little, little detail on it. On the obverse. Uh, ain't too terribly bad. It is pretty worn down, but anyhow, that's pretty cool. Get a 1917 out of it. And then I've got two 1969Ds. Um, I pulled these two aside and there's just that sheen that's on the 1968 is just kind of odd to me. It's a nice coin. Reverse isn't that good, but, and then two, I like this 59D, the tone of that brown, the way it looks. Pretty cool. Anyhow, and then possible varieties. Like I said, some of the coins are pulled aside because they're in really nice condition. So just want to check for any doubling, any DDRs or anything on it. Keep moving. All right, I've been about half the rolls, probably about 30 rolls. There's still 20 of these. It looks like 10 of those still in there. Um, I've got quite a few more, as you see, possible varieties from, like I said, 2006, 2004, the DDO DDRs, 1999, 2000, 92, so close AM, wide AM. And then this up here, still the same three wheat cents ahead earlier, the 1917, the 47S, and so forth. But then all of these are the 1969D and 1970Ds, and those all could possibly have the floating roof and the no FG on there. Um, I actually submitted another annex submission. Um, I mean, it was tight just as I was leaving to go to Watonga. I only have a couple hours to do it. so. I wind up not doing any video, but anyhow, I do have a 1969D and a 1970D, which is a buddy of mine's coins, and I submitted those off. So whenever we get those back, I'll do a little short video too. But I'm gonna go ahead and check through these. There's quite a few, like I said, we're halfway done, and that's a lot of varieties. But anyhow, let me jump through it, and, and if I have anything, I'll bring it back in. If not, I'll keep moving. All right, well, I'm down five rolls since the last update. Um, I started stacking back up again. It's nice to be able to look through the varieties and variety vista and stuff like that to see what I exactly need. Because going through all these pennies, there's quite a few, um, like I say, variety dates that are actually in here. So I want to make sure I cut out all the ones I really don't need. But I mean, anyhow, this is quite a few. Um, this is actually the 1969D and 1970D stack again. That's quite a few of them. I've never had that many in uh, my boxes before, but got a blazer. 57D. Boom. That's pretty. Anyhow, I even also checked there's, like I said, the 1917. Uh, it has a DDO that's worth quite a bit if it's in better shape, but pretty worn down. A 41, and like I said, that 46S. And then the. Um, 2009 penny here that I usually keep, like I say, the childhood, the presidential life, stuff like that. Don't see a whole bunch of them. Definitely want to keep them. And then that's that 59D. Keep moving. 
Well, that last roll I pulled two of the 64 D's definitely show you the difference in them. Be heavy copper on that one. And then this 64 D, there's a lot of them I'm getting are like this. Pretty cool. That's a little difference between them. But then I grabbed this out of the roll, that last roll also. It's a 1930. And I thought it had damage up here toward In God We Trust. And I wind up popping it on the scope there. It's actually going to be a lamination error. Nice. Well, that's cool to find also. That over here. Got a couple more rolls and then move into the hand rolled wraps. Well, that last Loomis roll that I had, I say Loomis, it's actually just, let's see, that NF string and sun. But anyhow, it had three Wheaties out of that one. It's going to be a 52D there. A 57D and then a 55D. Nice. And then I pulled this 1960 beauty out of there. So I'm definitely going to check in here in a little bit and see if there's anything going on with this one. Really nice. All right, on to these hand wrap rolls. So I reached in and I grabbed one of these red rolls. Um, there's a couple of different varieties in there. <clears throat> Some here, the red rolls, and then these other penny ones. But I wind up still on the same roll. There's a lot of these 1969Ds in there. And then there is a 1969S that was also tucked in there. So just looking at the roll, it's quite a bit of copper in there. So, going through the coins on the first couple here. So, that's a 1969D. That's going to go here. This one here is a 65. So there's nothing there on that one. That's going to be a 68 Denver. That's going to be a variety. Next coin, a 64D. Don't think so. This is a pretty one here. Ooh. 1969D, so that's going to stack up on top of the 1969, 1970Ds there. 1963 and 1964. Basically a whole roll of 60s. There's another 63D that's going to have a DDO on it. A 64D, I'm just going to stack them there just in case. Another 64D, a 69D, that's going to go up there for that floating roof and no FG. A 69S, so that's going to be a DDO, if possible. Go on to a 68, I don't think that's going to have anything. A 62D, that's not going to have anything. Another 64, another 64, but anyhow, I mean, it's a full roll of the 60s. Oh, nope, never mind, there's a 59D, and I'm going to have that off to the side for in case the doubled Denver mint mark on there, but anyhow, hopefully that continues that way, 69D, so anyhow, I just want to bring you in, those uh, maroon rolls are pretty nice. Well, I got a few more rolls opened up, and I did another one of those maroon rolls again, and it loaded me up on the 1969Ds, and I got an extra 1969S uh, there, and then a slew of variety. And also, too, I did get a 1957 wheat penny. But I'm going to do the same thing like I did a while ago. I'm going to look through all these and see if there's anything... To definitely keep crossing fingers i guess something out of the 69ds or the 69s well i didn't have anything in the 1969d or the 1969s basically no varieties i had a couple of things i was going to show you this is the 1969d 
and I had a video made a couple of days ago on this, but what you're looking for is the floating roof. So there's nothing here holding the roof up. You go to the other side. It barely looks like it's possibly something there, but it's not. Then you want to come down here and make sure it's not a no FG. So the right is going to be the floating roof, no FG, but there's an FG that's in here. Just using that example. And then the 1994, I guess I haven't actually seen that they had a DDR that was on there. Um, I was looking through this. It's got a little bit on the E here, top side of the R. Um, around America, you can see there on the C and A. But then on the building here, you see some on the building. A little bit going on on the T there, possibly a little bit on the N anyways. But the Variety Vista is saying that you need to look at the FG here. Now, I can't really tell if that's doubled or if that's just the machine doubling, but it's possibly, possibly machine doubling. Like I said, that just doesn't look like it's too doubled to me. Like I say, it looks like it's machine doubling. A little bit on the U there and on the N. Anyhow, that's a pretty close one. I'll hold on to it, just like I say, as a, for example. But, got a few more rolls left to go. All right, that's it for the $30 there. So, like I mentioned, still quite a few variety uh, dates. Man, it is a lot of variety dates in here, which is pretty nice. It's actually really nice to hunt. Uh, this is all the 69 and 70 D's that I need to look through. A 69 S there. And I got a couple other things. This is going to be a 2009. And I need to see if he has an extra finger that's up underneath the book there. It'd be like 11 fingers holding up the book. <laughs> Anyways. Alright, let me check it and I'll bring you back in for a wrap up. Alright, got everything ready for the wrap up here. So, I was able to get the 1917 that 1930 with the lamination error on the top left of it. Um, quite a few more uh, 55s, 57s. Got that Blazer 57. Pretty nice condition. And anyhow, got another 57 decent looking. Kept at 59. I'm going to hold on to that 1960 there also. Uh, the 2009, which like I say, you don't get very many of. That 88, possibly DDO, but I'm thinking it's machine W. And then uh, this one here was just out of random. I don't know if it was painted or if that's just kind of a grease strike through the way it looks. It's almost blotty. Kind of the same way on the back end. If you look on America there, it looks like it's just possibly a grease track too. Anyhow, well, like I said, oh, before we go. So tomorrow I'm actually going to be going and picking up from the post office there. I ordered a $10 bag of face value silver. So make sure you jump on tomorrow whenever I knock out that video too. But make sure to hit that subscribe button to catch those videos also. And uh, I also want to say thank you for all the veterans who were out there for everything you've done. Y'all have a great day.